Chaitanya Kripaya Yena Bhakti Nama Sunodita Namami Harida Samtam Bhakti Nama Sukatam Gurum. This is one of the two of the two Maham mantras or the Pranam mantras of Srila Haridas Thakur. As the uh, spiritual master of the chanting of the Hari Krishna Maha Mantra. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
empowered many of his disciples to illustrate a particular quality and characteristic that was part of his mission. He empowered Sanatana Goswami to be the exemplar of the quality of humility. He empowered Dhammadar Pandit to be so fixed in the principles of rules and regulations that he would even find discrepancies in Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's activities. He empowered many of his uh, Ramananda Roy and others in various qualities, characteristics that he wanted to emphasize in bringing about his mission of purification of the entire world. And with Srila Haridas Thakur, he empowered him to be the Namacharya, or the personality that would be the emblem of the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Srila Haridas Thakur's vow for chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is not approachable by ordinary people. <laughs> He used to chant 333,333 names of God every day, translated into 192 rounds a day. We struggle with 16, or a little bit more. <laughs> He's chanting 192 rounds a day, and he also had time to preach Krishna consciousness to the general mass of people. This particular presentation was emphasized about his disappearance, which is quite glorious. In fact, the disappearance of Srila Haridas Thakur is quite unique because of his quality of deep bhakti and his humility, his epitome for being tolerant. He is known for his toleration. When he was challenged by the ruling order at the time, the Islamic rule, to give up his chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra because he was born in an Islamic family. Uh, he defied that order and he explained that even if he wanted to, he couldn't give it up because all of his, every cell in his body is always chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare. So when he was asked to give it up, <laughs> uh, he was told that if you don't, you know, we're going to have to punish you. He said, "You may cut my body into a hundred pieces, but you'll see each of the pieces will be chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamant." So the mantra, the whole Hare Krishna Mah mantra practically became non-different from, Hari, from Haridas Thakur. He lived it, he spread it, he glorified it, and he showed the, the exclusive position of chanting Hare Krishna. And of course we understand in our practice of Krishna consciousness, this is the Yuga Dharma, this is one of the reasons why Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, one of the main reasons why Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came in order to spread the glories of the chanting of Krishna's holy name. Golokera Premadana Harinam Shankirtan Ratin Janmilo Kene Uhai. That this chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is not part of this material world. It's not one of the mantras simply in the Vedas. It is actually the activities of those in the highest realm of spiritual existence, Goloka Vendavan, where they chant the glories of the Lord always, and the chanting of the Maha Mantra is, is heard everywhere throughout the spiritual realm. Now that has appeared now in, the, in this uh, manifested material world into the hearts of the great souls who distribute that mantra to each and every one of us. And Srila Haridas Thakur is an exemplary example for the importance of chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. There are many stories related to his activities in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Of course, the most uh, 
illustrative one before I get into his disappearance is that he was chanting in a place called Burdan <laughs> um, and uh, he uh, was becoming quite known as a great sadhu, a great proponent of, of, of the principles of pre presenting the essence of at that time as it was seen as Hindu Dharma, of course it's not Hindu Dharma, it's Vaishnava Dharma, but as was seen in those days. And uh, there was one person who was the governor of the area, and name was Ramachandra Khan. And he was very envious of the popularity that Srila Haridas Thakur was receiving because of his uh, compassion upon the fallen souls by, this, by delivering the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. He was becoming very, very popular and famous. And so, and this is one of the qualities or characteristics of the material world. When someone becomes outstanding in a particular area, other people feel unhappy about that. They, they become envious or they feel bad about their own position. Or sometimes they even try to uh, destroy the person in different ways. So envy is one of the main features of the material world. In fact, Srila Prabhupada used to say, we fall to the material world because of our, uh, the, the, because the living entity cannot tolerate Krishna being the supreme within the spiritual world. They want to also have and hold a very important position. And that is not possible in the spiritual world. And therefore, in order to fulfill that desire, Krishna has arranged this material world for the living entities to act out their role of trying to be his competitor. <laughs> that is the purpose of this material world, is to try to compete with Krishna for being the most popular person. <laughs> and people do that amongst themselves always, and this is the nature of them. There's always competition on all levels of uh, activity for position, power, for acclaim, various types. So this uh, governor, Ramachandra Khan, he was very envious. So he decided to do something to try to destroy the reputation of Srila Haridas Thakur. So he called uh, all of the local prostitutes together and explained what he wanted to do. He wanted to create a situation where one of them would go and tempt Haridas Thakur and he would fall down and then that way he would be destroyed. And so he made his plan known. And then one, the most popular and the most uh, wealthiest of all the prostitutes, she came forward and said, I will take on the, resp the position of trying to make him fall down. So he was happy about that. And then uh, the plan was to go to him in the evening. He was living in a, a little hut nearby. And uh, Ramachandra Khan said, I will send my guards with you. And then when he, you know, gets caught in the act, then they will arrest him. She said, no, that's okay. Uh, I will go alone. And uh, don't worry, I will be successful. So she went. She approached the evening time, around this time, was around 6 o'clock in the evening. She paid her obeisances to the Tulsi plant, which was in front of Haridas Thakur's Bhajan Kutir. And then she proceeded to go where he was. She sat down in front of him, and he was chanting. And then she uh, said to him, Oh, my dear Haridas, you are very attractive young man, and I'm also known to be in the same category, very attractive. So I think our union together is destined by providence. <laughs> she made her pre presentation. <laughs> and uh, Haridas Thakur responded by saying, oh yes, actually what you say is correct, and I will fulfill all of your desires, but I have made one vow to chant 333,333 names of God each day and I have not able to fulfill my month's requirement. So please be a little patient, give me some time and I will chant and you can sit here and wait. And soon I will be finished. So he was chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And he was chanting on and on, hour after hour after hour. Finally, it was about midnight. <laughs> she had been sitting there listening, waiting. And then he, he turned to her and he said, Oh, I'm so sorry. It just seems I cannot catch up with my required vow this moment. But please, don't be discouraged. Please return. Come back tomorrow and I, surely I will fulfill your vow, your, your desire. So she left. And then Ramachandra met her the next morning and he expl she explained, Well, you know, it'll take me another night, but don't be, be patient. It's just a matter of time. So he was pacified. And she went the next night, same time around the evening, paid her obeisances to the Tulasi plant in front, and came in. And of course, Haridas Thakur was again chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And he said, Oh, thank you for coming. I'm almost finished. Just please wait. And so she sat and waited. Now, what was happening while she was waiting, she was hearing. And she was hearing more and more the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha. So something was happening. And then, of course, as time went on, it was again midnight, and Hari Dastakur looked and said, Oh, I'm again, I have, I'm una unable to fulfill my vow, but please do not become discouraged. Surely tomorrow I will fulfill your desire. So she left and explained to Ramachandra Khan what the situation was. And she said, tonight for sure. But her enthusiasm for the service she was given was starting to diminish because she was actually getting purified. She was becoming attracted to chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So she came again and Hari Vyasvakur was sitting there chanting the mantra. And she sat down immediately and she was listening and then Haridas Thakur was chanting on and on, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And at one point, as the evening was going on, something changed within her. She just started to cry. She fell on the ground in prostrated obeisance in front of Haridas Thakur and was feeling very unhappy that she had come to destroy this great saint. Now, she, when she came back to her normal consciousness, she prayed, begged his forgiveness, and explained the whole situation. And Srila Haridas Thakur said, Yes, I know everything about this rascal Ramchandra Khan. In fact, I knew he, he sent you in order to do this. And I was going to leave when I heard what was about to happen, but um, Krishna wanted me to give you some mercy, so I stayed just to purify you. And she was so thankful. And now she said, I want to become your disciple. Please give me uh, your initiation. He said, well, I'll give you instructions. You come back here. First, you go back to your place. You give away all of your wealth. She was quite wealthy. And you give it to all your wealth to the brahmanas. And you come back here. And in front of the Tulsi plant, every day you chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And so she did. And she sat there and Haridas left the place. And it explains in that particular pastime that she also was able to chant 300,000 names of God every day. Not only did he purify her, but he empowered her in such a way that she absorbed herself every day in chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. This was the uh, spiritual power of Srila Haridas Thakur simply by his association. And hearing him chant the holy names of the Lord, he could purify not only uh, the living entities in the human form of life, but in all forms of life, the trees, the birds, the plants, the insects, would all become purified simply by the sound of Haridas Thakur chanting. He chanted 100,000 names silently within the mind. He chanted 100,000 names softly 
And he chanted 100,000 names very loudly. So every day he would keep that vow of 300,000 names of God. So, of course, there are many wonderful pastimes, but uh, we were focusing on his disappearance. This is the title of this particular lecture, to give a little understanding of the glorious disappearance of Srila Haridas Thakur, which is unlike any other disappearance. Only one other person had a similar glorious disappearance, and I'll explain that as we go on. So Haridas Thakur was getting older, and uh, his body was starting to become very debilitated. But still, he was keeping his vow. But it was very difficult for him to keep up his vow of chanting so many names because of his uh, physical weaknesses. So one day, the personal servant of uh, Birch Chaitanya Govinda, he came to see Srila Haridas Thakur. And uh, Haridas Thakur was on the ground laying on the ground. He was chanting and struggling to chant because of his health. So Govinda had brought some Mahaprasadam from Jagannath Puri, Jagannath temple, and gave it to Srila Haridas Thakur. And then he reported back to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This was the condition of Srila Haridas. So the next day, Mahaprabhu came and uh, he saw Srila Haridas Thakur and he, uh, he said to Haridas Thakur, are you, how are you feeling? Are you all right? Haridas Thakur said, my mind is okay. Well, my, my body is okay. No, he said, my body is okay, but my mind and my intelligence is not. <laughs> That's how he responded. Because he was saying, I cannot, cannot uh, chant as easily and as enthusiastically as I could. So, in other words, he said, I can, it's becoming very difficult to fulfill my vow of chanting 333,333 names every day. And Srila Prabhupada in, writes in the purport of that particular verse, he says that, well, we have given this vow of our students in this entire International Society for Krishna Consciousness the requirements to chant every day 16 rounds on beads every day without fail. And we see many times people fall short of their vow. It says that if one cannot chant their prescribed rounds every day, uh, the word is he, Prabhupada uses in the purport, one is in a diseased condition. What is that diseased condition that's material consciousness? Or the desire to somehow or other find happiness in activities that are not connected with spiritual life. And therefore one neglects or somehow uh, puts aside the importance of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So Prabhupada writes that, that one cannot chant their rounds then they're in a very pitiable condition and therefore one should get help in order to get back to the standard because this chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, as Srila Prabhupada explained, is the basis of all of our advancement in Krishna consciousness. Chaito Dharpana Marjanam, it purifies the heart, it awakens one's attachment to Krishna, it is an ocean of spiritual happiness and it gives direct, it gives direct uh, connection with Krishna through the sound of his transcendental holy name. And of course, that is the basis of all of the activities we perform in, in devotional service. The quality of our chanting and the enthusiastic thing of our chanting reflects and pervades itself out to everything we do in Krishna consciousness. And so the, the, the activities of devotional service really become joyful, all of them, when we actually are very consistently, very regularly, with attention and as with the much as devotions we can acquiesce, chant our prescribed number of rounds. Of course, Srila Prabhupada also said that 
when you're chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, you will think, why 16 rounds? Why not 16,000 rounds? So the point he was making is that when one develops a taste for this chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, one will want to chant more and more and more. It be, the, the, num, the numerical value becomes what we call secondary, and the enthusiasm for chanting continues on and on. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, well, you may reduce your rounds. You have preached sufficiently, so now you may also reduce your rounds. So the Lord gave him that. He said, you are an incarnation of Lord Brahma. We know that from the pastime of when uh, Brahma stole the cows and uh, not cows, but the calves and the cowherd boys, as mentioned in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, how when Brahma was shown to be a fool in front of Krishna by trying to uh, play a trick on Krishna by stealing his, when he was apparently not there, his cowherd boys and friends and then calves, he realized his foolishness and he said, um, my dear Lord, in your next manifestation of incarnation, please put me in a situation where I can become humble. <laughs> he said, because of my pride, due to my position as being Lord Brahman, you know, I, I actually tried to, to uh, defeat you. I tried to show my power over yours, but I can understand my power is, is totally insignificant. And so, from that pastime, we understand that the Lord granted Brahma that, that benediction, so Srila Haridas Thakur, is actually a manifestation, or you might say, an incarnation of Lord Brahma. He also has the qualities of, of uh, Prahlad Maharaj, who is compassionate personified, when the Lord Nishringadeva wanted to give him a benediction, he refused. And uh, the Lord was persistent in wanting to give Shila, uh, Pallad Maharaj a benediction. And Pallad Maharaj said, uh, my dear Lord, if you want to really give me some benediction, let me stay in this material world and preach to all these fools and rascals who have created a, a, a humbug civilization. So his only desire was to show compassion to the fallen conditioned souls. So that same spirit entered into the body of Srila Haridas Thakur along with the personality of Lord Brahma. And there was a third person whose name was uh, Haridas also. He was the son of Rachika Muni. Rachika Muni was a great sage and he, he would every day do puja to his deity. And his son was called Haridas. So one day he said to his son Haridas, bring some Tosi leaves for the puja. And so the boy brought Tosi leaves, but he forgot to wash them. And so uh, Rachika Muni was quite disturbed that he received Tosi leaves that weren't clean for the, for the offering, for the puja. So he said, you're a malecha. <laughs> he criticized them and he said, therefore you should take birth in a family of malechas. So that soul who was Haridas, and the son of Rishika Muni, also entered into the body of Srila Haridas. So it was actually a great benediction that he received. So these three aspects make up the, the uh, uh, identity of Srila Haridas Thakur. And so the Lord glorified for him for that. And after being glorified by the Lord, Srila Haridas Thakur just started, just turned the glorification towards Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, explaining in so many ways how he was so merciful, how he came to purify the world by giving everyone an opportunity to reach the highest form of devotion, Sri Krishna in Vrindavan, through the process of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And, and Haridas Thakur then started to 
demean himself. He said, I am born in such a low class family. I have no good qualities. Only by your mercy am I able to perform any devotional service. My dear Lord, I have one desire. And this is a very strong desire. Please, can you fulfill that one desire? The Lord said, my dear Harinas, whatever you want, I will make it happen. <laughs> and so he said, my dear Lord, soon I, will kn I know that you will, you will wind up your pastimes in this incarnation. And I don't want to be here to see that final Leela of yours. So please give me the benediction that I may leave soon so I do not have to see this, uh, this Ananta Leela of your activities. And the Lord simply smiled. <laughs> and uh, he, he said to her, and he turned to Haridas and he said, uh, I have to go now, but I will return tomorrow. So the Lord left and he went to do his noon duties. The next day the Lord returned, but this time he returned with his entourage of some of his devotees. And then Haridas Dakar was more in the mood and the Lord was there to give him that benediction. And so there was a kirtan. Lord Chaitanya began kirtan and Srila Vakrishwar Pandit, who was an incarnation of Shiradaksai Vishnu. He started to dance and dance and dance and dance and the devotees were enthusiastically chanting. At one point, uh, Harida, uh, Lord Chaitanya was looking into the beautiful face of Srila Haridas Thakur. At that point, Haridas Thakur positioned himself at the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya, grabbed one of his lotus feet and placed it upon his heart. And looking into the beautiful, beautiful, smiling face of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, Haridas Thakur meditated on that beautiful countenance of the Lord. And in that way, he simply gave up his life. When everyone saw what had happened, everyone started to cheer. They couldn't believe it. Simply by his own will, Srila Haridas Thakur left the world. And uh, everyone was comparing that disappearance of Srila Haridas Thakur to the disappearance of Bhishma Dev who on the battlefield, when he was full of arrows that were shot by Arjun and Krishna, he maintained his life and whenever, because he also had that power, he received the benediction from his great father Shantanu Maharaj, that he could leave the world whenever he wanted to leave. And though he was quite mortally wounded by these arrows, he still remained alive in order to fulfill the Lord's desire to preach to or to enlighten Yudhisthira Maharaj in what it means to rule the kingdom in a Krishna conscious manner. And so that disappearance of Srila Haridas was compared to, to Bhishma Dev who waited 18 days till the sun came to the northern meridian and at the time of Makara Sankranti when everything was auspicious, he simply disappeared by his own desire. Now we see that devotees um, also, there are also examples of devotees who also have left the world in our ISKCON society according to their own desire. I can think of two different cases that happened and um, based on their own desire to leave the world, they left. I'll explain that I'm not as part of this class who they were if you want to know more about that one. <laughs> so the, the kirtan just reached a crescendo after that. But Lord Chaitanya was not so happy. He wanted Haridas Thakur to stay. But Lord Chaitanya later on said, I could not stop him. I could not, I didn't have the power to prevent him from leaving. His desire was so strong. <laughs> and this is interesting because as we go on in our Krishna consciousness in this society, we're surrounded by many uh, devotees, 
both friends, seniors, and others. And uh, it breaks our heart, and we feel very, sometimes very quite devastated when we, someone very close to us leaves the world. So Srila Haridas Thakur was thinking, I don't, I don't want to see that last Leela of yours. <laughs> it would be too much for me to handle, so please give me this mercy and allow me to leave and my own will. Mm -hmm. So then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, he was going through different emotions, feeling sad and at the same time feeling jubilant. So at one point he picked up the body of Srila Haridas Thakur in his hands and he held that body. You can see the beautiful picture. There are paintings of that. And the Lord started to dance. <laughs> holding the body of Srila Haridas Thakur in his arms as the kirtan was going on. Just to show how much, he, how much love he had for his devotee. And then the Lord guided everyone towards the ocean and there was a procession. But they made a beautiful palaquin. They created, they, they constructed this palaquin which was, they says it looked like an air shift, airship. And they placed the body of Srila Haridas Thakur on there. And then dancing and dancing in great ecstasy and having kirtan, everyone went in procession and down to the ocean. And Lord Chaitanya stopped at a particular place and then he said, here we will place the body of the Haridas Thakur. So devotees dug a, a whole pit in the sand and they placed Srila Haridas Thakur's body in there and then devotees brought Mahaprasadam from Jagannath, sandalwood paste, um, garlands and various other items of Lord Jagannath and placed it on the body of Srila Haridas Thakur. And gradually they filled the hole by putting sand onto the body. And the kirtan was going on during this whole time. Um, as this was going on, Lord Chaitanya roared. <laughs> I mean, you can imagine what it's like for the Sri, for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He roared in great jubilation just seeing the power and the spiritual desire of Srila Haridas Thakur. He could leave the world at his own will. So then after they placed the body in it, the devotees went into the ocean and started splash, splashing around. They were playing they circumambulated the body and it was a tumultuous kirtan. Then Lord Chaitanya wanted to honor Srila Haridas Thakur by arranging for a wonderful feast. And so he left and went to the shopkeepers in the local area and he asked the shopkeepers, please deliver some Maha Prashadam as much as you can. And so they all became in jubilant so they started to grab their baskets and put various Maha Prashadam in it. But Sarup Damodar, the personal assistant and servant of Lord Chaitanya, he, she, he was feeling very unhappy that Lord Chaitanya had to go beg for the shopkeepers. So he told the Lord, you go back to your place. And the Lord obediently obeyed his servant and then Sarup Damodar turned to the shopkeepers. He said, give me five, palm hole, five handfuls of every one of the items you have placed it in your basket. And so from shop to shop they filled up baskets and then they went to the place. And Lord Chaitanya was there. And then when all the prasadam was brought there, Lord Chaitanya sat all the devotees down in rows. He made roast himself. And he wanted to serve the feast. <laughs> Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, was so enthusiastic about what had happened that he wanted to show his enthusiasm and his happiness by by serving all of the devotees. So the devotees sat down. Now uh, they were, but nobody would eat because Lord Chaitanya was not sitting down. <laughs> and so they delivered the prasadam. And then Lord Chaitanya got up and he starts serving all of the devotees. And it says that Lord Chaitanya's hand was big. <laughs> You know, his body was almost two meters. <laughs> that's, he was, that's how tall he was. He had a big hand. So when he was serving the, the prasadam, 
he put enough prashadam on everyone's plate for five men. <laughs> mentions he, he wanted to serve, and he kept encouraging the devotees to eat more and more, and he kept filling up their plates. And everyone didn't want to refuse, refuse Lord Chaitanya's service, so they were eating up to their necks where they couldn't eat anymore. <laughs> and finally, Sri Chaitanya, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was served also. But actually what happened was Kashi Mishra, um, well, Srub Damodar uh, also sat the Lord down and then four devotees, Shankar, Kashi Mishra, Srub Damodar, and uh, one other person, um, I think I have it written here. Let's see, who's that fourth person? Um, oh, yeah, okay. There was, yeah, uh, Jagarananda, uh, Subdhamadar Kashi Mish, they took up the serving. And then, right around that time, Kashi Mish sent an invitation to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for prasadam. So the Lord went to fulfill that desire of Kashi Mishra. Then after everyone was served nicely, Brahmananda Bharti, Paramananda Puri were also there. And the devotees were, were it was almost like a festival, in a prasadam festival. Everyone was so joyous. And the, the atmosphere of happiness was so strong that Mahaprabhu was really, really pleased. Everyone was so happy. And then the Lord said at one point, he said, he started to, his moods were changing, although it was so joyous to see the glories of Srila Haridas of course, passing. The Lord was also feeling uh, unhappy. And he said that uh, Krishna, by his will, gave me the association of Srila Haridas Thakur. And because Krishna is in the independent in his will, he has now taken away that association. So the Lord was explaining how he felt now that Srila Haridas Thakur. And this is important to understand because it shows how much the Lord loves his devotee. Of course, we might say, well, that's for Haridas Thakur, but that's true for Anyone who engages in devotional service becomes very dear to the Lord. To become a devotee of the Lord is not a small thing. And that means you become the best of all persons. In other words, you're taken care of by the Lord himself. He arranges for everything in your life. And he is there also to guide you through the various ener his energies, especially his pure devotee, the spiritual master. So the Lord loves his devotee. Of course, the Lord loves all living entities, but, but as he says in the Bhagavad Gita, Samoham Samabhute Shuname Dwesu Sinastriya. I am equal to everyone. I envy no one, nor am I partial to anyone, but anyone who renders service to me is a devotee. I am in him and he is in me. In other words, there's special mercy comes to those living entities who take up the service of the Lord's, uh, the, the, in order to serve the Lord. So that's the Lord's special mercy upon his devotees. One becomes very dear to the Lord. And then the Lord said, Haridas Thakur, he was the crown jewel upon this world. And now the, the world is bereft of its gem. So he actually illustrated the glories of Srila Haridas Thakur by saying because when you when you compare someone to something then you understand what is the nature of that comparison and when there are so many jewels and decorations upon a altar or some or someone there is one jewel that is outstanding it's called the crown jewel the one is the most noticeable the one is the most beautiful so he gave that position to Srila Haridas Thakur. He, is the, he was the crown jewel upon the world. Because he taught in a very a glorious and exemplary way the importance of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And as Srila Prabhupada mentions many times throughout his statements uh, that uh, Satatam Kirtayantomam, in other words, ch chanting of the holy na names of the Lord 
is not simply a vow of 16 rounds. It's our life. <laughs> it's our life. In other words, we live to simply to chant Hare Krishna. And therefore, a devotee will think, why 16 rounds? Why not 16,000 rounds? In other words, to chant as much as possible. Kirtan, Japa. And that way, Prabhupada said, if you're always chanting Hare Krishna, you're in the spiritual world. You're not part of this material world anymore. And so this, this holy name is the direct connection with the Lord by His mercy. And therefore, it is the most merciful manifestation of the Lord's mercy coming in the form of Krishna Himself in the form of His holy name. And Srila Haridas Thakur was the ideal teacher. He taught that principle to the max in, by showing that his whole life was centered around chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And uh, this uh, particular festival of the disappearance of Srila Hari Das Thakur comes towards around the year, around the time of September every year, and it's and aligned with another very important festival called Anantar Chatur Dasi. Anantar Chatur Dasi is a ceremony that honors Lord Vishnu. I'm not sure of all of the details of that, but Hari Das Thakur was given a particular title. He's called Sarva Shastraditi. That means first class devotee who knows the essence of all Shastras. So one who chants the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra always, they know what is the essence of all Shastras. To glorify the Lord, Satam Prasangam Mama Virya Samvido, Bhavanti Hitkarna Rasayana Kata that to glorify the Lord and the association of devotees and particularly in glorification of Krishna's holy name is the gives nectar to the heart to the ear and raises one to the spiritual platform so this is a little bit about his disappearance um, which is quite glorious uh, as was mentioned that his disappearance was only compared to one other person that was Grandfather Bhishma Dev, who had the same power to leave the world at his own will. So these are the essence of this particular pastime. So we, if you go down to that same area, there's a temple that was built right around that same Samadhi Mandir of Srila Haridas Thakur, it's there now. And you go there and there's beautiful deities of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Nityananda, separate altars, one for Dvaita Charya. It's a wonderful place to go and chant Japa. Devotees go there and you'll find that as soon as you enter there and start chanting God Japa, you want to stay there and continue to chant, 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 chant. It has that atmosphere of the holy name pervades it. In that place, it's beautiful. And uh, the whole pastime of Srila Haridas Thakur is illustrated on the, on the inside walls of the temple where you can see all of the different uh, pictures that line up into a complete picture of the glorious disappearance of Srila Haridas Thakur. So we pray to Srila Haridas Thakur. Um, what is that prayer? Um, my dear Srila Haridas Thakur, alone I have no hope to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, but please be merciful and with a particle of faith give me the, give me the treasure of the, ch of the chanting of Krishna's holy name. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur explains that one cannot chant japa attentively unless they pray for attentive japa. And this prayer that is made by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur is given towards Srila Hari Das Thakur because he is the Namacharya. And so praying to Srila Hari Das Thakur for his mercy so we can chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra 
as we understood that mercy is the manifestation of our efforts. Whatever efforts we make in our efforts to become Krishna conscious, we try to attract the mercy. And when that, uh, that effort is satisfying, then the mercy comes. And that mercy makes everything possible, everything successful. So we pray to Srila Haridas Thakur, please give me the mercy of your, the holy name so I can chant with enthusiasm, I can chant with devotion. Um, there are many other pastimes of Srila Haridas Thakur. There are so many. Um, she take, I'll have to go back to when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu approached Haridas Thakur and he said to Srila Haridas Thakur, Srila Haridas Thakur, how will the non-moving living entities be benefited? And Srila Haridas Thakur said, only by the loud chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. <laughs> so this is important to understand that when we chant Hare Krishna, we can actually benefit the trees, the plants, and the, uh, so loud chanting kirtan, or even sometimes we chant japa very loudly. That benefits not only the person who is chanting, but all living entities within the range of that sound vibration. <laughs> So this is the glory of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and, and therefore praying to Srila Haridas Thakur empowers one to chant more and more and more. And when we get a taste for chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra then the whole, our whole Krishna consciousness becomes onto another level of existence. And that's the desire of a devotee to get Nam Ruchi, that taste that is so sweet and so deep that uh, we lose track of time. We just keep chanting, 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 like that. If we think that chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is difficult, it'll be difficult. <laughs> if you think it's a great opportunity to serve the Lord, an opportunity to purify our existence, being grateful for the opportunity to chant, then the whole mood of the chanting will turn to a positive effect. Always approach the holy name enthusiastically with a desire to chant in the best possible way, praying to the holy name to please reveal yourself in the form of Krishna and Radha. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, uh, how much time do we have? Should I... Huh? Hmm? Yes. Uh, do we can take questions? It will, it's 6.45 now, so we have 15 minutes left? Okay. Is there anyone who would like to ask a question? Yeah. Oh, 15 more, okay. So I have 15 more minutes to speak a little bit more about Srila Haridas Thakur. Hmm. Of course, we hear about the pastime of how he was beaten in 22 marketplaces to show his tolerance and compassion to those who try to kill him. As we mentioned earlier in the lecture, when he was sentenced to death by beating, being beaten in 22 marketplaces, he simply accepted it as the mercy of the Lord. And then the executioners, of course, tied him up, and then they started to drag him along the ground, tied up, and these two very big, powerful men with huge whips started to beat him. When the people in the area saw that, they became a, really horrified. They started, they tried to stop the executioners by, by offering them various kinds of gifts so to please stop, but they wouldn't stop. And so there was nothing no one could do. And, and Haridas Thakur, as he was being beaten, he was chanting. 
the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. But not only was he chanting, but he was also praying. This is the most amazing thing. When someone is doing some harm to you, you always think in a negative way towards that person, or maybe even in a vengeful way. But this, per but Hari Das Thakur was feeling compassion for his torturers, and he was praying to the Lord, please forgive them and give them and give him, give them your mercy. And therefore, later on, when Srila Hari Das Thakur appeared in the assembly of devotees at the house of Shiva Thakur. When the Lord became the Supreme Lord, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took the position of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and was being worshipped by all his devotees, when the Lord was giving out benedictions and blessings to all his devotees simply by their requests, and sometimes the devotees would be very shy in asking anything from the Lord, but the Lord would approach them directly and say, ask something from me. And so, um, Hari Das Thakur also, he, he approaches, to, uh, he, the Lord approached Hari Das Thakur, and Lord Hari Das Thakur said, My dear Lord, I know you, you are so determined to give me a benediction, therefore I will fulfill your desire. My benediction is that in every birth I take, let me become a, uh, a dog in the house of your devotees so I can get the remnants of their prasadam. That's all he asked for. The Lord was so pleased with the humility of Srila Haridas Thakur. And then the Lord wanted to, to reveal something to Haridas. So the Lord had his charter on. And he said to Haridas, do you remember? Do you remember when those torturers were whipping you? I could not tolerate that. So I decided to come from Vaikuntha along with my chakra. And I was about to kill both of them. But your prayers were so strong, you were praying for them, that my chakra could not move from my hand. And, uh, and then the Lord said, but I could not tolerate you being having to suffer like that, so I put my body on top of your body. And then the Lord took his charter off and turned around and the whip marks were still on the back of, the, of Lord Chaitanya's back. When Srila Haridas Thakur saw that, it was just too much for him to handle. And he simply fainted. So here's another example of how the Lord not only loves his devotee, but actually protects his devotee from the sufferings in this material world. And so that was a beautiful display of uh, how a person who is being uh, tortured, ridiculed, beaten, is thinking of their, their, their tortures as an object of their compassion. That was the spirit of Prahlad Maharaj. When Lord Nishringadev asked Prahlad Maharaj to take a benediction after being so pleased with Prahlad Maharaj's devotion. Now, Prahlad Maharaj didn't want to take anything. He kept refusing. Finally, he said, well, my dear Lord, I see you're so persistent. <laughs> so, if you want to give me a benediction, liberate my father. His father, you know, did everything he could in his power, and he was very powerful, to try to kill his son. But the Lord's protection was complete. And therefore, although Prahlad, Prahlad never had any enmity or any envy towards his father, and he asked for the benediction, and the Lord said, My dear Prahlad, you don't even have to ask for that. As soon as he, as soon as he was uh, you know, killed, he actually achieved liberation. The Lord granted that automatically because because of his connection with the pure devotee. Here's another nice point to think about, to understand deeper, that if we're connected to someone who is fixed in devotional service, then we also can also achieve some of that merit by that connection. That is the mercy, uh, that is the power of pure devotional service. 
and it expands itself out to others. And we were just listening to Bhakti Vigyan Maharaj speaking today and he was explaining that, that great devotees, they don't even have to do anything. They simply, if, they're, if you're in their presence, simply by their presence you become purified. <laughs> simply by their presence. So, that's another of the wonderful pastimes of Srila Haridas Thakur. No one knows the appearance the time of Srila Haridas Thakur. We never celebrate his appearance day because that day is not known as he was born in a very obscure family. And um, he just appeared one day in the association of Lord Chaitanya's uh, entourage. And so, uh, of course, that was destined from his previous incarnation as Lord Brahma. Now these are some of the uh, activities of Srila Haridas Thakur. Uh, any questions, comments by anyone? And if you want to ask questions in general, not directly related to the subject matter, you can also. Do we have some mm -hmm. me means by which, okay, we have microphones? Yeah. something about uh, uh, childhood or useful youthhood of Srila Haridas Thakur when he also manifests himself as great devotee. Hmm. Uh, my god brother Rupa Vilas Prabhu has written a book on the life of Srila Haridas Thakur. I think from what I remember at least there is something in his early life that was mentioned there. But the history is not so clear. There's not much evidence of what happened in his early life. But if you can get a whole copy of that book, it's, it's The Life of Srila Haridas Thakur by Rupa Vilas Prabhu. You'll find many, many pastimes and activities of Srila Haridas Thakur. But I can't really recall anything earlier than the pastimes that we that we heard now we mostly hear hear that one of his early pastimes was purifying the the uh, prostitute of course he was also an associate of Lord Nityananda he appeared before Lord Chaitanya appeared on the planet Srila Haridas Thakur was older than Lord Chaitanya and, um, him, and Hari, uh, him and Lord Nityananda of course in the pastime of them coming and purifying Jagai and Madai Haridas Thakur was also involved in that particular pastime. Mm Anything else? <laughs> There's a couple hands here. There's a hand over here uh, on the left hand. Yeah. Question is: uh, You said that uh, the Lord is very affectionate to his devotees, even if this devotee is not very advanced. Anyone who has rendered devotional service to the Lord becomes very dear to the Lord. Everyone's dear to the Lord because everyone is this, is connected with the Lord in loving service. But those who actually render service to the Lord become dear to the Lord. Everyone, no matter what level. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was asked by one of the residents of, what was it? Um, Kulagram. He was asked, my dear Lord, who, how can we tell who is a devotee? 
Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave a very liberal answer to this question. How can we tell who is actually a devotee? And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, anyone who wants chances, chance to Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, I consider to be a devotee. That was his statement. Only once. A continuation of this question. So our spirit of uh, sense gratification is contaminate contaminate our uh, desire for serving Krishna. And and what to do? Even if we try to follow of the process of devotional service, this spirit is very strong. It's kind of uh, contradiction. What to do? Yeah, Prabhupada said, Krishna consciousness is very simple, but it's not easy. <laughs> very simple, but not easy. So, what does it mean? What makes something easy or hard? That's mentioned in the Bhagavatam in the fourth canto. And the story of Dhruva Maharaj, Prabhupada makes his point. Some say that Krishna consciousness is very easy and some say it's very difficult. What is it? Is it easy or difficult? And Prabhupada answers the question after posing the question and he says, for those who are determined, it's very easy. For those who don't have determination, it's very difficult. So then the question comes, how to get determination? And determination comes by way of giving up sense gratification. The more you give up sense gratification or material, we have to understand what is sense gratification. Anything that is contrary to our devotional service to the Lord is considered to be material. Sense satisfaction comes by way of the execution of the law. Our senses become satisfied in Krishna consciousness as long as we follow within the context of the given activities. But if we go outside of that and try to enjoy independently, that is called sense gratification or material desire. So the more we can give that up, the easier Krishna consciousness becomes. <laughs> now you might say, well, how to get that determination? So one of the, re one of the ways to get that determination is to associate with devotees who have that determination. Because by association we also develop some of the characteristics, we, divide, we, we admire certain qualities and we try to exemplify those qualities in our own life. So when we associate with devotees who are determined, we also get that, that element in our life more and more. And of course, Srila Prabhupada said, the more we give up sense gratification, the more determination becomes and the more easier Krishna consciousness becomes. It becomes natural. So that has to be practiced. So one of the ways you can also give up sense gratification is to pray. Ayi nandam tunuja kinkaram patita mam vishame bhavam budo O son of Maharaj Nanda Krishna, I'm your eternal servant. Somehow or other I've fallen to this ocean of birth and death. Please pick me up from this ocean of death and place me as one of the atoms at your lotus feet. In other words, we're asking the Lord, please come and pick me up, save me from this, this ocean of of uh, suffering, struggling simply to live. So the mercy of the Lord is there through the sincere prayers of the devotee. So we should pray like that also. My dear Lord, whatever it takes for me to become Krishna conscious, please bring it on. And what, my dear Lord, whatever is blocking my relationship with you, please remove it. 
This is a very powerful prayer. This prayer was introduced by Srila Bhakti Tirtha Swami many years ago. He, he actually made it in, in the front of the entire GBC body. He said, he's, we should pray like that. My dear Lord, whatever I need to become Krishna conscious more and more, bring it, bring it to me. And whatever is blocking my advancement towards your lotus feet, please take it away. <laughs> So, that second part of the prayer sometimes is a little difficult because there's certain things we still are attached to and we don't want those things to leave for some reason. But if we have faith in Krishna that, that the removal of all of the blocks in our progress of Krishna consciousness will give us a platform of transcendental happiness and satisfaction that is, cannot be compared to anything in this material world, then it becomes natural and easy. So we become convinced by we, when we hear more and more of the importance of devotional service and read about the lives of the great souls who have become successful in their sojourn to become Krishna conscious. Maharaj Haridas Thakur was uh, chanting Mahamant. Where are you? Raise your hand. Okay. Okay. Haridas Thakur was chanting Mahamant. Hmm. But how he, how he taught? Who, who taught, told him? Who taught him? Who taught Haridas Thakur to chant Haridas? <laughs> yeah. Maybe by rebirth or... Because he was from Muslim family, but still he started... It doesn't really say what part of his life he began. But um, the chanting of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra has always been around, even in the previous ages. It was there in Satya Yuga, it was there in Treta Yuga, it was there in Dupura Yuga. But in those ages, it wasn't the Yuga Dharma. And in those ages, people considered it very easy to do that. So the Maha Mantra is, is, is eternally existing within the, sciences, within the activities of the Vaishnav culture. So it's there in the Shastras. The Shastras are full of many statements and glorification of the Holy Name, even in the Shrutis also. So it's not something new. <laughs> it's always been around. <laughs> But Srila Haridas Thakur understood that it is the means for self-realization in this age. It mentions also that um, he had a lot of association with Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. Raghunath Das Goswami actually took advantage of the association of Srila Haridas Thakur. There's another story when he was went to he, when he went to the live in the place where Srila Raghunath Das Goswami was. Raghunath Das Goswami was still living with his parents at the time. He was still known, known as Raghunath. His father and his uncle would have different gatherings and invite holy persons, sages and others to come together and discuss the scriptures. And Haridas Thakur was asked to be the, the, you know, the senior devotee in that assembly and speak about the glories of devotional service. And so when he spoke, he started to glorify the holy name and he said that, you know, one can simply, achieve, one can achieve liberation as a byproduct from, by chanting the holy names of the Lord. Because many of the persons who were coming there, they weren't Vaishnavas. Some of them were just various persons who were practicing jnana yoga and different types of yogas. So he was saying, you can reach liberation simply by chanting Hare Krishna. But there was one person whose was name was Gopal Chakravarti, and he was really disturbed by Haridas' statement. And he interrupted Haridas, and he said, what are you saying? And simply by chanting this Hare Krishna mantra, one can achieve liberation, where the scriptures mention it's very, it's very difficult to achieve liberation even after many lifetimes. 
And then he started to criticize Hari Das Thakur's statements. And he actually offended Hari Das by saying, and if this is what you're saying is not true, may your nose fall off. He said that. <laughs> and everybody in the assembly became shocked when they heard that. And they realized that he had offended this great soul. And so Haranya, Majamandari, and his brother got very angry at Gopal Chakravarti, who was one of their employees. So they, he, they fired him on the spot and told him to leave. They apologized to Haridas about you know this offense that this person committed. Everyone was feeling bad that he was insulted by this person. But Haridas didn't. He said, to him, he's just simply ignorant. He doesn't know anything. And then later on, Gopal Chakravarti, who was a very attractive looking person, his nose fell off and he got a leprosy. <laughs> so he got the reaction from his own offense. So this chanting of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is nothing new in Kali Yuga. It's always been over. It's been it's in the scriptures, it's been around since the beginning of time. <laughs> but Lord Chaitanya has given it special focus as the essence of purification and the essence of achievement. As that verse says, Kaler dosha nidi rajan asti eko mahagun kirtana eva krishnasya mukta sangam param bhajat. That Kali Yuga is an ocean. Kaler dosha nidi nidi means um, ocean. Kaler dosha means faults. This age is full of faults. So many faults. But there's one boon. Uh, what, uh, asti echo, one boon. One, what is that? Kirtana eva krishnas. Yeah. And what is the result? Mukta sangha param bhajat. One can. Uh, become fully purified from all material desires and enter into the kingdom of God simply by chanting this Hare So you'll see in Srimad Bhagavatam there are so many statements in glorification of this chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. It's there in the Bhagavatam. It's Satatam Kirtayantum Mam. It's also mentioned, Krishna mentions it in the Bhagavad Gita, not directly. But he talks about glorification of the of the name of the Lord. So it's not something that Kari Das Thakur just picked up. It's always been there. <laughs> it's been there from time immemorial. In fact, Srimad Bhagavatam ends with the glorification of the the Sankirtan movement. So Bhagavatam is eternal. <laughs> okay. Uh, when and where Haridas Thakur first met Mahaprabhu? Okay, there you are. Okay. Yeah, because I can't see yeah. that yeah. good. Okay. Go ahead. So, when and where Haridas Thakur first met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Hmm. When and where did Srila Haridas Thakur first meet Mahaprabhu? The past time that I, I think of is the time that when Mahaprabhu was in Navadvi trying to spread the holy names of the Lord and Srila Haridas Thakur had joined the uh, with Lord Nityananda to carry out the instructions of, Shila, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But I can't, and I have to express my ignorance in this film, I can't remember the initial meeting of the two. Um, I'm sure it's in Rupa Vilas's book on the life of Srila Haridas Thakur. I don't, I don't remember it being mentioned anywhere in Chaitanya Charitamrita. If someone else can answer that question, please do so.
There was a question over here. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, uh, my question is, uh, we do have compassion for the people who are in, f in favor with us. We but have compassion for the people who are? In favor, in, who are in favor in, with us, like who favors us. Okay. But then, like Haridas Thakur, he, he was beaten in the two markets, but still he had compassion for those people. And because of his de strong desire, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not do anything to them. So how do we develop this compassion for those who doesn't favor us or who harms us? <laughs> that's, a good, that's a very noble Vaishnav quality. Prabhupada talks about this in different lectures. How someone will make you their enemy, but a Vaishnav doesn't have any enemies. Vaishnav doesn't see anyone as enemy. If someone is trying to do harm to you, you can say that, actually you can understand that Krishna is putting me in this position for some reason. And so rather than blaming the person, you can you see that what is happening is uh, meant to happen in order for you to get purified, to learn something, to become more surrendered, to become more attached to Krishna. So rather than blaming or having negativity towards the instrument of your karma, as it says in the Shastra, um, you can see that that is some, it's coming your, your way before, for, for some particular reason. And then to understand that reason is is something that you have to re, you have to try to understand that reason either through shastra or through the help of others. There's a reason why everything happened. Therefore, Prabhupada said, "Never, do not be disturbed by the instrument of your karma. Do not be disturbed by the interest." In. So he calls that person an instrument. In other words, they're delivering something towards you which is meant for you either because of something you did in the past or if it's under Krishna's guidance then it's being done in order for you to become more Krishna conscious. So if we blame the person we may not have love for that person I mean that's another level of devotion but at least we shouldn't blame the instruments of our karma that it happened for a certain reason. Try to understand that reason. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Where are you? Oh, okay. Thank Maharaj, you. what are the negative effects on our chanting uh, when we do Guru Aparad? When we do Guru Aparad, so what are the negative effects on our chanting and how to remove it? Well, Guru Aparad is Maha Aparad. <laughs> so you can expect that you'll, you won't be able to chant with. And if you, and in fact, uh, it's interesting because I won't mention any names, but I know one person who that happened. He was a nice devotee, but. He uh, got involved in offending his guru very strongly. And after that, his whole Krishna consciousness went out the door. In other words, it was gone. And he couldn't chant. He came to me asking me for help. And I said, Ch chant. He said, I can't chant. I said, chant two rounds in the morning, two rounds in the evening, four rounds. He came back a couple of days later, I can't do that. I said, all right, chant one round in the morning, one round in the evening. He said, I can't do that. I just can't chant. <laughs> so this is the effect of Guru Aparad when it's not, I mean, you can rectify that by sincerely and humbly apologizing for that Aparad and beg for mercy and forgiveness. And then, of course, the guru and even the Vaishnava is always very kind. They always have a tendency to forgive. 
And then gradually you can reinstate yourself into the process of devotional service. So that is the, that is the way to overcome, to actually pray, to beg forgiveness. And to sincerely, not that I'm begging forgiveness because of the suffering that I'm going through. I'm begging forgiveness for the offense that I committed towards the person. If we're only th thinking about why we're suffering for our offense, and we beg forgiveness based on that, that is not complete forgiveness. Or that is not complete, uh, what is the word? Um, uh, contrition. Contrition means to feel unhappy for causing somebody, something, some offense to someone else. So it's rectifiable. But the, your question is, yeah, it's very devastating. Any offense to any Vaishnav will cause our chanting to some to diminish. And if we don't deal with that, in due course of time, we'll lose our enthusiasm for chanting. So we have to make the amends. And sometimes we don't even know if we commit an offense to anyone. So we can pray, my dear Lord, I don't know, I must have committed some offense to some Vaishnava. Therefore, I'm sincerely repentant. I'm sorry for that offense. Please forgive me. Uh, and if you sincerely offer that un for an unknowing offense, because we also commit offenses unknowingly, then that could also be rectified. And there's examples of that also. But if you're always in a mood of service, you won't commit offenses. If you're in a mood of enjoyment, be careful. <laughs> as soon as you are in a mood of enjoyment, then e you can easily make an offense. Always, always be in a mood of service. If we're in a mood of service, we're actually enjoying. <laughs> because that's our position. Any other questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Oh, okay. Buddha Bhavana Prabhu. Yeah. Thank you for a wonderful class. Um, just connecting with the previous question about um, compassion. So you mentioned about Prabhupada's statement about not becoming um, upset with the instrument of one's karma. Could you also elaborate on how we should deal with people who are, let's say, um, who are inimical or negative. So you mentioned the internal mood that we don't become disturbed by the instrument of one's karma. But then could you elaborate on how one should interact if one has to be in that same environment with such individuals? Oh, okay. If one has to be in the same environment. Huh? Mm -hmm. And also what happens if we don't have to be in that environment? My dear sir, I see you're feeling, you're feeling some negativity towards me. What have I done to disturb you? <laughs> In other words, you can ask them. Directly approach the situation and ask why they're acting in the way they are. Humbly. And see if you could rectify the situation simply by, you know, discussion. Sometimes, because of lack of communication, these, these moods of uh, negativity grow between people in the same area. But when we open up our hearts and we try to communicate and find out what is the disturbance, we can sometimes understand that and somehow overcome that. So when you can't get away from that individual or that situation, then you have to do something. In order, otherwise, how it'll be impossible to stay in that situation, at least in a proper consciousness. So just approach the person and ask. Unless they're a demon, <laughs> they'll forgive you. <laughs> or they'll, they'll explain what's, what is causing their disturbance. <laughs> is that okay? Okay, thank you.
Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. Can I ask, can I pray for, can I, can I pray for help to somebody? I, it was very dear to me, but he's probably not Krishna conscious. Yeah, you can pray for anyone. Thank well, you. what are you going to pray for? That I mean, I that's question, that's the question is to pray for, but how do you want to pray? That he, that he makes the way to, to Krishna. That's, that's the best prayer. <laughs> that he finds the way. If you make a sincere prayer, then Krishna will do something in that person's life to help them <laughs> come closer. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maharaj, for a wonderful class. So we thank to Maharaj by chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra loudly. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Shila Haridas da Kaur ki jai, Namacharya Shila Haridas da Kaur ki jai. Hare Krishna.